Hey, it's me, the Steaming Bean. Uh, I'm not sure if you're a vinyl album collector, and I always liked vinyl albums, and I hadn't collected them in a long time. You know, I lived overseas for 12 plus years, and uh, when I decided to come back to Canada, I, I was going to collect vinyl records again. And after showing off um, what I acquired from the uh, swap meet last weekend, I really thought, you know, it would be good to show off some more vinyl, and I had a really fun time showing off what I, what I got last week. But when I first moved back to Saskatoon about two years ago, I got this album that I ordered online, and it's called Cadillac Elvis. I love the uh, the album cover on it. It has, um, of course, pictures of Elvis Presley. And um, pictures of the Cadillac logo. Uh, at first, when I bought it, I thought, okay, this may have been uh, a special issue from the Cadillac, uh, sorry, Cadillac uh, company, part of GM. And the reason why I thought about that was because years ago, my father bought a, a 1978 Lincoln Continental, big, big maroon beast. It was huge. You drive this thing, it, you feel like you're <laughs> you're sitting in someone's living room being driven around. It. <laughs> Anyways, when he got the car, uh, the thing was, my father was always a Cadillac man. And we were driving down to PEI from Ottawa. And he had this Cadillac that he, he bought from someone that he had known. And, and this um, Eldorado was giving him problems and he was getting frustrated with it. And on the way to Prince Edward Island, uh, he got really frustrated with the Cadillac that he had to get it um, serviced at a garage in, inside Quebec City. By the time he got to Moncton, New Brunswick, he had a buddy or someone that he had known back in Ottawa who had a, um, a car dealership. So he drove, <laughs> he drove his Cadillac, told us to get out of the car, and we hung around the dealership for a while, and all of a sudden, we're... <laughs> We, we load into the uh, the Lincoln Continental, and that would have been, I guess, 1979. And he had that Lincoln for a couple of decades, so that was really cool. Um, that Lincoln had become a big part of uh, my dad's life. He really, really loved it. Anyways, this album, hey, um, okay, going back to Lincoln, sorry. Uh, the, when he bought the Lincoln, it came a lot with a lot of 8-track tapes that was you know, thrown in, and, and some of the 8-track tape, tapes were um, issued by Ford Motor Company, and that's why I thought this was a, um, from from GM Motors, but no, uh, it says, um, can you read that? TCB Records, TCB Records, a subsidiary of the History of Rock and Roll Incorporated. Um, in other words, it's a bootleg album. <laughs> it only cost me 10 bucks, but I really think the album cover is worth it. Um, yeah, I'm just getting into some, some of the vlogs that I'm enjoying on YouTube these days. Um, there's one, one, uh, one vlogger I found really interesting. Her name is, not her name, but her, the name of her vlog is, it's called It's Bee's Life. On It's Bee's Life, uh, she does a two-part series when back in the day, uh, she was a tour guide at Graceland in Memphis. And now I went to Memphis last year on holiday, and I really enjoyed visiting Memphis. And I got into Graceland, and that was always um, on the old bucket list. So uh, I really want you to check out It's Bee's Life. And the title was, I was, I was a uh, tour guide at, at Graceland. And it's really worth checking out. Um, she started vlogging. You know, she she developed cancer, and and uh, she she decided to start vlogging for her um, her granddaughter, I think it is, and it turns out her her vlog became uh, quite popular, and uh, I've been enjoying it. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, oh, she's kind of going on to battle with some some um, critics of hers and some nasty people who get her confused with someone else. So, I really would, I really would think it would be cool if, um, if this, uh, it's Bee's life, uh, if she would 
you know, go around and, and visit uh, other parts of Memphis that she knew when she was growing up. She's, uh, I would say she's in her 50s, late 50s. So it would be cool to see um, where, where she hung out when she was a kid in the 70s or a university student in the early 80s. You know, I really enjoyed the um, the Graceland vlogs. Another um, a vlogger I'm enjoying, Deborah Joy. Deborah Joy, older lady living in her van. Uh, she lives in the Pacific uh, Northwest, I think in Oregon, or maybe Washington State. I'm not sure. Uh, and it's her. She's coming across um, tough times uh, in her life. Uh, she's on disability and, and living, you know, on a very small pension. So she decides to move out of her apartment. She researches uh, van dwelling, and she gets into it. and And she vlogs often. And uh, she really is a sweet woman. I'd say she'd be in her, in her 70s. And, um, yeah, she's having a lot of supporters. And, of course, as she becomes more popular, it's weird how some of these haters uh, come out of the, the woodshed. Just a bit odd how someone could hate on someone who's who's had a tough life in her 70s. Um, yeah, it was kind of, I kind of felt sorry for her when she was getting ready to get her van set up and on her vlog she had mentioned that her son was hinting that he had no time really had no time to help her set up the van because he was at the same time setting up his sailboat and i thought you know <laughs> i don't know the story between the mother and the son i really don't want to know the story but you know honor thy mother and father honor thy parent you know it's you know, no matter what the history is, if someone's going to uh, live in a van and their blood relative, especially your mother, I, I think that's more important to fix up that van than, than a sailboat. Just saying. Hey, uh, <laughs> Justin Guyette. Justin Guyette vlog. Really, uh, <laughs> he, he did a live stream the other day about a story about um, his, his laptop or uh, getting stolen. He he got drunk, blocked out, had his laptop stolen. Uh, I guess it was an expensive old Apple one. And and he's trying to, um, you know, he needs it for his work and whatnot. So he, he goes around hunting down for a new one and he has his buddy with him. And it turns out they go to Kijiji Ads here in Saskatoon and it was <laughs> he sees his stolen laptop up for sale for 450 bucks or whatever it was and so him and his buddy arranged to um meet this guy to buy the computer and i guess when the guy shows up the guy's in his car and i guess the car stops and they start talking <laughs> and poor justin's uh justin's buddy uh grabs this guy by the back of his head and rams him a couple times into the dashboard or the steering wheel. Hey, <laughs> that's what friends are for. Uh, Justin Guyette, he's a guy I've been following. A really interesting um, cat. Um, some of um, his videos can have a bit of a darkness to it, but hey, that's that's like that's real. Uh, another one, Sean Rockenboxes, uh, is a guy who I'm I'm following more, and I really want to. Um, see more of his vlogs. Sean Rock and Boxes, if you're, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty talented. And I, I think Sean Rock and Boxes can become like Jordan the Lion of Toronto. Toronto has lots of places where films were, were shot and he could do vlogs on film locations in Toronto. Just a hint, just something to think about Sean Rock and Boxes, enjoying your vlogs. And hey, uh, looking forward to some more vlogs. And, and I think it would be really cool if you uh, kind of share about your life story more. Um, it was really touching uh, two-part series of places where you lived in Toronto, outside Toronto and Scarborough. I enjoyed that. Well, hey, that's it for now. TCB, as Elvis would say. And vlog could put.